Hello, everyone. This is Marie Labras. And I am Dee Gozian. Join us for an eye opening journey into the creative world of art in Sarasota and Charlotte counties and from around the world. From prehistoric cave paintings to modern day films, art has served as a vessel for storytelling and conveying mankind's relationship with its environment. Traveling together, we will explore the behind the scenes world of artists from the literary, performing, culinary, media, or visual arts. Welcome to Kaleidoscope of the Arts. We are broadcasting from the Bishop West Real Estate Tower out of Northport, Florida on WKDW 97.5 FM and online at kdwradio.com. As a 501c3 all volunteer community radio station, we are run for the people and by the people just like you. Watch us on Facebook Live at KDW Radio dot com northport art center or on my personal page oh sorry any of the following opinions are our own and not of that of the radio station we'd like to thank our sponsor the northport art center located at 5950 sam shea post way northport florida 34287 off of northport boulevard Boulevard or call 941-423-6460. Check out their website, www.northportartcenter.org, or they offer so many wonderful classes for adults and children. They have adapted to COVID, so Dee Dee will speak about that a little bit later. So on with the show. Our special guest today is... John McDaniel. And before I bring John up on the screen, I want to tell everybody in the audience a little bit about him because you may know him as McD from the Rosie O'Donnell show, but there's a lot more to John than just being the musical director uh, for the Rosie O'Donnell show. Let me tell you a little bit about his background. He was born in St. Louis, Missouri to his mom and dad, of course, and he has a sister, and we'll talk a little bit about that, and a niece. His career started in 1990 in LA production of Chicago, the musical, but before that he did things in school too. He, and we'll talk a little bit more about that too during the show. In 2000, McDaniel received a board of directors award from the Manhattan Association of Cabaret and Clubs and he had subsequent credits, including Taboo, Brooklyn, and he also did Bonnie and Clyde. Actually, he did the Bonnie and Clyde, uh, and we'll talk about that up in Sarasota at the Oslo and a roundabout theater company, company reading in February 2009. He's done so much, and he, he has won awards. He's been nominated for so many awards during his career. His wins have been in 1992, he won the LA Drama Critics Circle Award, Best Musical Director in Chicago. 1999, a Grammy Award, Best Musical Show Album, Annie Get Your Gun. 2001, the Daytime Anime Award, Outstanding Talk Show for the Rosie O'Donnell Show in 2002. Daytime Emmy Award Outstanding Talk Show, The Rosie O'Donnell Show, and he was nominated in 98, 2001, and 2002. We'll bring John up right now because he's worked with so many great people, and I want to introduce you to a friend of mine who is probably one of the kindest men that I have met in the industry, in the entertainment industry. He's always been special, He's always been very, very kind. And that's one of the things when people are out there, they want to know, well, what's he like, really? And I would say John is probably one of the sweetest, kindest guys that I know. Oh, don't make me cry so soon on the show. Yeah. Hi, John. Yeah. Well, you are, John. Oh. I've known you for, we were talking, uh, it's over 20 years. Yeah. I've, Isn't that you know, crazy? Yeah, I know. I was going back then. This year was the 24th anniversary of the Rosie O'Donnell show. And because we're all, you know, separated, we had a sort of an online Zoom on June 10th this past, you know, during quarantine. 
And it was so great to see everybody, but we're hopeful for the 25th, we can all meet together in person in New York. That's oh. our that's our hope. We did the 20th, we had a big party for the 20th, yeah. Do you think that you'd come back together just to do a reunion? I know well, that you did something, uh, Rosie did the Rosie O'Donnell show. It was April To 20th. the Actors Fund, right yeah. in, in the beginning of all this, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. in March, actually. It was it was still March. It was like March. Yeah, 20th. I think March twenty third or something like that. It was close yeah. to her birthday. It was so great to be sort of back with her for just a split second in that forum. You know, it was really neat. Right. Well, you were the musical director, and I know a lot of people know you for that. How did you end up meeting Rosie? How did this all come together? And I want to talk about your career too in the beginning, because I want to give hope to the kids out there. Yeah. That you As do started I. in high school and you went to Kirkwood. Kirkwood High in St. Louis. Yep. We did not have a proper drama program, but, but our shows were student directed. So in my sophomore year, I directed Bells Are Ringing, which I don't even remember how that even happened, but I was, I was the drama kid and, and everybody was like, John will do it. John will do it. So I, I did. And, and it was, uh, very, very exciting and memorable and kind of pointed me on a directing path very early on, you know, when I was 16. Strange. That's Do you remember those days? Oh, yeah. I should bring up a picture of what you look like at 16 because. Do you have one there? I don't know. I'll have to look. Do you have one on your website? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I don't yeah, know. so when I go there, I'll look at the pics here and bring it up if I can. As we're as I'm looking around and talking, no, when you that was pretty young, sophomore as yeah. a director. Yeah. I no, I know you then. played Tevia back then too. I played Tevia two years later when I was a senior. Yeah. yeah. And did the choreography. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that you could dance. Nobody did. <laughs> Well, I've been doing shows since I was in sixth grade. I've been in musicals, you know, like three or four musicals every year. So it was like in my veins already. Um, well, your mother, let's talk a little bit about your mom, Jane. Yeah. So she was my first piano teacher. She uh, taught music in the house. So when I was, you know, one, two, three, four, you know, when I was in the crib, there was Mozart and Bach and Beethoven wafting in from the living room after school every day. So I got such a fantastic education early on, you know, in music. Nice. And when when you're saying that you got that music and your mom actually taught a lot of different people over the oh, years. Yeah. yeah, she has. Her, some of her students have gone on to be really extraordinary uh, artists. Yeah. Now, how did you end up going to Carnegie Mellon for your college? I used to go to see the shows at the St. Louis Repertory Theater and so many, I would look in the program and read all the bios and, and so many people had gone to Carnegie Tech. It was called Carnegie Tech then, um, or, and then became Carnegie Mellon University. And so it was on my radar. And when it came time to choose schools, I really wanted to choose a school. It, it, I, I also found out that Carnegie Tech had offered the first drama degree. I think it's 1914. Um, oh, there's some lovely photos. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there I am, little musical John. <laughs> so, so I um, I auditioned for Carnegie. I auditioned also for Northwestern and was accepted to Northwestern. But I chose Carnegie Mellon because I had been seeing the results of that training program my whole life at the St. Louis Rep. So that kind of became my oh dear, there we are. Great. Yeah, in mom fact, this is mom and dad. And your father was an attorney, correct? Yep. And I actually, your father okay. was not only an attorney, he was he was something else. Wasn't well, he, he? was uh, often, the, he was the president of the Missouri Bar and the St. Louis Bar Association. We used to go on, on summer trips to the Bar Association uh, conventions all over the world. The first time I went to London was for a bar convention trip. Uh, when I was 10, maybe. There we are. There we are. Well, and I'll, I'll take us off of the screen right now with that. <laughs> when when you're talking about, a long time. When you're talking about that, 
so you ended up going to Carnegie Mellon and Dee Dee and I were talking before Dee Dee actually went to Carnegie Mellon, not, not, but, not as a college, but go ahead, Dee Dee. Yeah. Whenever I was junior high age, Carnegie Mellon had a, uh, for, for kids, they, they gave away scholarships and the teachers that taught fine arts would, you would go on Saturday to go over to the museum and we'd meet at the, uh, they had a roundabout there and they would set up and they would teach us because I was in visual arts. And so and you grew up in Pittsburgh. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. And I got a scholarship through my school, my regular oh, cool. school public school to be able to go to Carnegie Mountain. So when I saw that you had went there, I, I just was commenting to Marie, it's a beautiful campus and it it, is. it's uh, very rich in um, arts there. So I yeah, fell in love with it. In fact, going to visit the various campuses, being on campus at Carnegie Mellon just sealed the deal. I was like, this is it. I love it. It feels like college, but Pitt, the big city is right there. You know, it was really, it was mm -hmm. ideal. Yeah, it's nice there. I love uh, it. So you went to Carnegie Mellon, and then what happened? Well, it, interestingly enough, maybe you tell me if it's interesting. When I w when I entered CMU, I was a dramat. I was going to study music theater and you know singing, acting, and dancing. And at the end of my second year, my end of my sophomore year, Mel Shapiro, who was the head of the department, pulled me into his office. He said, "Now listen, you're a, you're an okay actor, an okay singer, an okay dancer, but your music is way up here, and we want to create a program for you for junior and senior year." Um, so that you can, it, so that we can increase your music uh, studies. So we want to offer you orchestration and conducting and advanced theory and piano and all kinds of things that I wouldn't have taken if I was just in the drama department. So I emerged at the end of my senior year kind of on the path to a more music focused uh, a career in the theater. And I'm so yeah. grateful that that happened because, uh, you know, it was recognized and it was nourished. Yeah, you know, and I did not know that about you, that that's actually, you know, and those are the questions that you probably don't sit and talk about why you went on that career path or not. No, after you got out of college, what was your first job? So I left school before the graduation ceremony because I was hired to be in a four person singing and dancing review on a cruise ship in the Greek islands. So this is 1983, May. Uh, May 1st, I flew to Athens, joined the ship, and we did, a, we were, I was on the ship for six months singing and dancing in these kind of terrible shows, but we had so much fun and um, met a lot of people from LA then. And I met my, my then boyfriend on that ship who lived in LA. So I moved to LA to live with him. And we were, we're still friends to this day, but we sort of ended our relationship after a while. And I stayed in LA and then I was there for 10 years. Um, so it, again, it's like that thing of you, you just don't know who you're going to meet, when you're going to meet them, who, uh, what kind of influence they're going to have on your life at the time necessarily. But, you know, looking back, you can see, well, if I hadn't done this, I wouldn't have met her and she wouldn't have introduced me to him. And then I never would have gone there and met her who met, him. you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. that, it's what well, it's a, it, those are the paths that we end up taking, even like me meeting you and the way that we ended up meeting. Do you remember when we first met? Do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> you do. You're going to have to remind me. I, I pictured I it. Hollywood. In, I met Hollywood in person. In, when we were in Orlando. Yeah, in Orlando. And I was raising our grandchild at the time. Yes. And we, uh, Rosie was supposed to be there. And uh, there was a group of fans that were going to be there. I got invited and I had my granddaughter, five years old, I think at that time. Weren't we on the AOL chat thing at that time? Yeah. Was it that? I, you yeah. know, probably, probably. You know I think what? that was the only way that any of us could ever communicate. We had this AOL chat, you know, these chat rooms. We had like a rosy room and I was the Roe right. McGee. Yeah. 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 yeah isn't that good, good memory? Yeah. Good memory. The beginning of the internet. So anyway, yeah, Planet Hollywood. There was a there was a meeting after we did a taping, and then there was going to be a, a lunch thing, and we and there were a bunch of us there. It was fun. Yeah, there was a, and that was the first time I saw, I met you, and I think we hit it off right away. At least that's my version. I think we did too. Yeah, <laughs> we became. We 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 became. What am I going to say? 
I don't know. It's, it's been recorded. I don't know. No, we did. We did. You're right. We did. Yeah. And then we ended up, there was a group of us that were fans, and we ended up going to the show. I was at the Rosie show. I don't know how many times. And I remember the time, and I don't know if you'll remember this, and I don't know if anybody really cares out there, but I sweep sticks for a hobby. And I won the one, one sweepstakes that, and I'm trying to think of the company. It was when the internet was first starting that people could do all this stuff. Yeah. And I entered one that I could go, uh, we were getting a free tour of the DC comics and Marvel comics. And it's when the first Spider-Man came out and the Spider-Man costume had gotten stolen from Marvel comics. And uh, there's a whole nother story behind that. But I brought my sister with me as my guest and I go, you know, Rosie's show is just around the corner. Let's go see, stand in line and see if we can get uh, standby tickets. We got number one and two. Oh I mean, I mean, we got, the, we got the, and I go, okay. So we were there, but I didn't get John's eye. I didn't want to do stuff because we were on a timeline. DC Comics was waiting for us to come over there to, me with their executive directors. And I ran right, up that's there. the whole reason you were in New York. Yeah. yeah, that's the reason I was in New York. And I ran down and John says, you were here all this time? I didn't know you were here. But uh, those were those were the things. And I've, I've gone to Mr. Magoo, Actors Fund. Yeah. That was wonderful, too. As I'm reminiscing, everybody's going, she's all over the place because I have a habit of doing that. But that's you do okay. for the Actors Fund all the time. And I've gone to L.A., when you've had so many people, in fact, at the LA one, this is where, and it's not with you in it, I'm sorry, but this is where, if people can see, Jason Alexander and Sam, uh, who's Sam, Sam is there. Uh, um, was that, that a huge benefit? Were you, was it falsettos that you saw? Was it falsettos? It was uh, the one that, that, that was was in, in. yeah. Um, I try to go to some of the things, but I have a life too. So sometimes it's hard. His, oh, and I want to talk to, about his parents. You know how parents are very supportive in life? I have never, ever met two parents that are as supportive as your parents are for you. Oh, that's nice. Well, that's really nice. I, I think you're right. I think they're, they go above and beyond. Because they've gone to Europe for you, correct? to come and see some of the performances that you've done there. Yeah. A few years ago, I was doing a thing at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and they came over and they're, you know, they were well into their eighties then. Oh, you wow. did a Fringe Festival. Yeah, with Barb Younger. Wow, yeah. okay. A lot of shows all around. Well, let's go back to your career because I know I'm jumping all over the place here. You, I know, I know. This is Marie. If anybody's watching, that knows me. They know that I'm all over the Don't place. Don't go changing, Marie. Just, <laughs> yeah, just let's talk about a couple of the Broadway shows that you were involved with. Well, you did the Annie Get Your Gun. You did Grease. That's actually where you met Rosie. No, actually, I met Rosie in L.A. years before that. Oh, you did when she. Was <clears throat> yeah, we were friends way before we worked together. I did not know that. So yeah. talk about that. Well, we would wind up at the same parties and I would be at the piano playing because I could play every show tune known to man and she could sing them all. So we were, you know, uh, a big match. She can't, when I was playing a concert series for Patti Lapone, Rosie came and after the show, we all wound up at the hotel across the street. I'm at the piano, Rosie's singing, Patty's singing. You know, we were so, all of that happened before uh, Rosie and I were offered the opportunity to do Grease on Broadway, which was each of our first Broadway shows. I was, we were both living in LA. I was hired to be the music director and the producer, Fran Weisler, called me and said, I'm gonna have, I don't know if you've heard of this girl, Rosie O'Donnell, and I was like, yes. <laughs> and we're gonna have her come over to your house and sing for you and you tell <laughs> us if she can sing or not. So I was like, okay, well, this is my first Broadway show. This is my big dream. And here comes Rosie to to my house in, in near Lake Hollywood in the Hollywood Hills. And she, you know, comes in and she's rolling her eyes going, we know I can't sing, but let's do this anyway. So she's, we went through, there are worse things I could do. And it was fine, it was good. You know, she's, she sings yeah, like she sings. Yeah. And so then afterwards, 
she, after she left, the phone was ringing. It was Fran. She said, how did she do? And I said, she was great. She's going to be great. And so that, that was sort of the, the sealed the deal with Rosie and I being, you know, thick as thieves forever. And, um, and then the rest is history. We both went and did the show and it was a giant success. It ran for five and a half years on Broadway with various people coming into the various roles. And with that, were you always the musical director for during that five and a half year run? I was the, I was at first, I was the, the vocal dance and incidental music arranger. So I arranged all the music from top to bottom for the whole thing. And then I was the conductor music director for the first nine months. And then I, I became the music supervisor having a different conductor in the pit. Cause I just couldn't do eight shows a week anymore. It was, it's a lot to do that. So yeah. um, I was lucky enough to be able to become the music supervisor. So I would check in with the show and put the new people in when, you know, here comes Linda Blair or here comes Al Jarreau or Jennifer Holiday or whoever was coming in, uh, I would put them into the show. Um, Is that where you met Brooke Shields? Say it again. Is that where you met Brooke Shields? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because because I, I was, we, made, we made a second cast recording with Brooke too. Okay. And I know that you did. Yes. You did a recording with her. Now, yeah. when did you do Annie and get your gun? A few years later. So I was now, Fast forward, I was on the Rosie O'Donnell show and uh, two years in, we I was offered this opportunity to do And to Get Your Gun with Bernadette Peters, which, uh, you know, Bernadette was someone I'd always wanted to work with. And And to Get Your Gun was a show I'd been in in high school. It's one of those shows I mentioned before that I'd been, you know, in a million shows. So to get a chance to arrange the music for a Broadway revival with Bernadette Peters it was like a no brainer. Yeah. So I did that and then I was asked to produce the cast recording along with my friend Steve Ferreira and we uh, we had a, a magical time putting that together. And then we were nominated for a Grammy, which I thought was like the greatest thing ever, but to win on the very first time out was awe-inspiring. I'll never- and that, Yeah, and it won a Tony then too. The show won the Tony, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that was really, Good. And Reba McIntyre, you work with too. She took wow. over for Bernadette when she left. A lot of ladies played Annie after Bernadette and Reba, but Reba was great. Oh my yeah. God. She seems like a really sweet lady. She's incredible. And her. because of you, I've met so many wonderful people over the years. You really, you really opened up doors, especially when you did Joe's Pub, when you brought Eden mm -hmm. Espinosa, where you were introducing her. Yes. And after, you did four shows there. And me, uh, my friends and I were at all four shows and John would introduce us. And so it kind of opened doors for us because <laughs> there were different people in the room. And because yeah. of you, I was able to meet Carol Burnett and spend uh, you know, some time with her just talking about her daughter, not about her career, but about her daughter. She had recently lost her daughter to brain cancer and we were talking about family. So I really thank you for that. And your friends with Julie Andrews. I mean, I'm name dropping here, but they're. I know it feels weird. It's like I'm still the little kid in my bedroom in St. Louis dreaming about Broadway, but now I've actually done a lot of that. It's so weird and continue to actually. But yeah, it's it's a remarkable thing to get to work with these people that you've admired forever. You know. How did it be? How was it for you with the Rosie O'Donnell show? I knew that it put you in the limelight because when you're on Broadway, it's a different crowd that really knows who you are. And when you go on TV, if you're in movies or that, you have a whole different, you're visible to the world. Yeah, it changed my life literally almost overnight. I went from being someone who could walk around the streets of New York and everyone would just walk right by to being someone who people would say, I mean, and you know, you can feel that, you know, you, you can, it's a, a tangible thing. You'll be at a restaurant. Oh, I hate to bother you, but I want to tell you how much we love your show. It, you're not bothering me and thank you. <laughs> but you know, it, it really does television, the, the, the power of that show and also our show debuted at huge numbers. So it was immediately popular second only to the debut of the Oprah Winfrey show, as I recall, in numbers, um, which is really extraordinary. It's not like just being on any show. I mean, that show was big right away. So airports were all different. You know, just being out in public was different. A part of me loved it because I'd always wanted to be an actor, you know, and always wanted to have some notoriety. 
but also after a while you just want and now my life has returned to a kind of a nice little ebb of once in a while people recognize me but i've been able to go back sort of to being the the music guy which i love how was it for your parents because i know your parents would be with you at different times like that too i think they i think they were they've always been proud of me but um yeah, I think that they, they're they just, they're infinitely supportive. They really are. And you go back uh, to your hometown and actually perform off and on. In yeah. fact, I was in St. Louis when you were in, I don't know why we were, what were you doing in St. Louis when we went? St. Oh, Penny, oh. <laughs> when a group of us came there, and you know why I'm laughing? Because we went for this lunch and people know that i'm quirky you know people that are watching this show do you remember when i had the fisher price microphone thing yes. <laughs> yeah. yes, I do. because of projection you are still interviewing that's good yes, here i am in fact the way that i ended up doing a show i would never truthfully in a thousand years put me as a person doing a show i i really Although I do interview people, you know, that's just my normal thing that I do, but right. I'm not, I don't think I'm the best interviewer in the world. However, around here, I'm very well known. Absolutely. And they don't have, tell yourself short. You're very good at what you do and you, you really listen and you care. And that's, it's a beautiful thing. And you have a special name for me. MW, yeah, I, I was told people that. <laughs> I've been in New York and I end up on the news. <laughs> and I don't do it intentionally, but I do end up getting. I've forgotten about that. Thanks for reminding me about that. <laughs> Those and people are probably wondering out there, what is she talking about? Well, yeah, let's I, move I, on. I, yeah, I, I end up in the media. Didi, so. help us, help us. Yeah, Didi <laughs> knows about this, right, Didi? We talked about this. Yeah. Okay, I'll just say it because we can say it on, on air, media whore. Yeah. <laughs> because I just end up, I don't do it intentionally, but I do end up, even here, I end up in the paper yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's You're exactly, all, we're yeah. all the better for it. Yeah. Well, any anyhow, let's get back to you and let's talk about the Broadway shows that you were involved with. And I know the besides those, you ended up being the musical director of Taboo with Boy George when Rosie was actually the producer of that show. Right. Yep. And I remember seeing it in the previews and then afterwards the different times and i know the development that you had to go through for that show that i love the music and i love the costuming and and i remember when we first went and saw it we went up about angus mcdowell McEnroe, after, yeah. up. and and i remember i was telling Dee, Dee before you'd ask me well what do you think because I can't lie. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And I was having trouble with the story in the beginning. I love the music. I love the costumes. But the story wasn't gelling to me until the end that I understood it. And I know that you guys actually changed it. That was a really great show. It really was. It was and then you, yeah. And then you went on to do Brooklyn. In fact, we'll talk about all the different things that you have that you've done in your life that I actually, yeah, everything's oh, here, yeah. Here. yeah. So tell you me a little question. bit about John McDaniel at the piano Broadway. So I was invited to, there's a player piano sy uh, system called Piano Disc and it's in really high end homes or all around the world uh, installed into grand pianos mainly. And you can, you can put a John McDaniel disc into your piano and it will play and the keys go down. And it was this really, fantastic technology, especially when it was new, um, you know, decades ago. So I was invited to come and be a piano disc artist. And I, we made a deal and I flew out to Sacramento where they do their recordings, recorded in their studio and they make these, these discs. We then also um, 
I thought, why don't we make a CD of these recordings that anybody could put in their car or in their home and play the same music. So we played it back on a piano, recorded it, and I made these CDs that are still available on johnmcdaniel.com, by the way. And, um, and so we made a Broadway recording. We made a Christmas collection. Uh, I did some original music on that Christmas one? My dogs, Joanne and Hillary from back in the day. Okay. And, and then, then this is your, that's the original music one called compositions. Yep. Okay. And then this one really sounds better if you have a glass of wine, I'm told. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's the Joe's pub. That's live at Joe's pub. Oh, is this the one I was at? Which yeah. you were at. Yeah. We recorded those and then put together a live album. Yeah. And then here's your Brooklyn live. Brooklyn, yeah, I produced that recording. Of I have a taboo one, but I think the grandkid has it. Okay. And, oh, and that's Maury Yeston. So Maury Yeston is a beautiful songwriter. A lot of Broadway shows, Nine, Titanic, uh, some great, great music. And I uh, produced and conducted a compilation of his music. And you can actually purchase these on YouTube and on your website, correct? Yeah, johnmcdaniel.com. Oh. Yeah, I gotta put that up. Not really on YouTube, but you can find them on. You can find them. You can find them. You can and, find them. Uh, <laughs> You're there for so anybody that wants. So much of music now is streaming, you know. So it's um, but there's there uh, but they still sell. People still uh, wanna wanna have them, which makes me feel very happy. And down on the bottom of your page, it's screening www.johnmcdaniel.com and his Facebook page on Sunday afternoons, John McDaniel, go to his Facebook fan yep. page, Sunday Tea with John McD at 3 p.m. And if yeah. you go to that page, you can see past episodes of his tea. And then you do pop-up concerts. I do, whenever I feel like it. I just open the computer and go on. And, and those are fun too, because I don't put them, to, there's no show I'm, you know, I put together. I just do live requests. So I chat with whoever's on and we talk about things and they ask me questions and then somebody will say, oh, can you sing on the street where you live? And yeah, so then we do, you know, and those are shorter, like 20, 30 minutes, um, but they're super fun. I did one a couple of days ago and I think it has almost 700 views already. It's just wild. The internet's just a, a wild and wonderful place. But my next scheduled Sunday tea is this Sunday, September 6th at three o'clock. And you can watch it live or you can watch it, you know, anytime after that. It stays up right. say forever, but, you know, we all know that forever is a long time. So. It is. And I, uh, Tim Fitzgerald, love this man so amazingly. Hi, Tim. Thank yeah, you. He's an actor and a good guy around here. He does Sarasota Players. I think the Charlotte Players and okay. other things. And uh, and then Luke Ra. Now, Luke Ra, you've met. Uh, he works for Disney. Oh, now, cool. for the last 17 years, Luke, Man. I do remember. And Luke went to Taboo with us in New oh. York. Actually, we stayed together in the same room. I got us, uh, I know it was a two bedroom uh, place <laughs> that we did. And Luke and I still get together. He has a townhouse in uh, oh, right cool. behind Disney, Disney, and I'll go stay with him. And so does Kathy. A uh, mutual friend of ours, Kathy. Nice. When she goes on our vacation, that's where she goes. So anyhow, back to you with Sunday Tea with John McD. And I, you know what I should have asked you for? Because because you're in the entertainment industry, you lost your income for going and doing all these gigs. Oh, and you were supposed to be doing the Playbill Cruise right now. Right when, now. Yeah. Right now. <clears throat> and... Right now, out, we were yesterday. We would have sailed out of Rome uh, or all around the Med, winding up in Barcelona next Sunday. So, um, yeah, it's 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 hard to quantify the the loss of the work because I feel like my work is my life in a way. You know, I music lives in time and it moves through. I I just it's a huge part of my life. Anyway, it's not my entire life, but. It's a big part of my life, so that's gone. And then the the remuneration, um, gone. You know, crazy. I, I there were so many things. Kristen Chenna with Broadway Boot Camp was canceled this summer, which I've started doing. And I was supposed to conduct a big South Pacific in Patchogue, uh, Long Island this summer with a Broadway cast. And 
um, the O'Neill, you know, our cabaret and performance, right, so which we're usually in person in Connecticut. This year we did it online and it was remarkably successful for being online, but it wasn't the same as being in person. In person. Yeah. Did you do that on Zoom or did you use Vimeo or did you use, how did you use, do that? We use, they, they use Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Which has its drawbacks. It's the audio is not as great as it could be. No, I think the audio on StreamYard is a lot better. I don't you? I don't know. What? The <laughs> <laughs> a good one. <laughs> you're you're such a trip. Yeah, I miss your face. I really do. I'm, I I I'm right here. I know. Here I am. Here I am. Squeeze that cheek. <laughs> Oh, when when you've been able to, when you do your Sunday teas, I know that you have a PayPal account or something. You want to tell the audience? I should have put that up there. Oh, no, that's okay. No, no, no. It's, it's totally fine. Yes, I have my virtual tip jar so people can donate if they want to, uh, you know, help me uh, pay the electric bill. Um, so I, I use Venmo and PayPal, and, and people are so beautifully generous. I, I am... am astounded at the generosity and and you know these are tough times nobody knows what's around the corner so um but i love singing and 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 playing and the fact that i can do it myself and i can make my own little show um it makes me really happy and then that i can share it with folks who enjoy it is the icing on the cake now how do you memorize is it just a natural thing i don't i have the lyrics right in front of me are you kidding me? No. Really? Really? Yeah, I, because I mean, I can remember music. I can play any kind of any song, you know, mo that I know, obviously. But um, but the words don't come as easily to me. So I always have the lyrics up and then I, you know, refer to them. I know some lyrics. I don't know. It's a, it's a mixed bag. And I try to do new songs, too, that I haven't done before. So memorizing is not really Yeah, good. because that's good. why I can't do. What's that? People think I'm an actress and I'm not. I can do improv though. And oh. that's, why, yes, I can do improv my first time. And you probably don't even know this. First time I ever did improv was on a New York City stage with live, uh, with professional performances. Was Joey Cola there? I don't think so. No, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah. You know Joey Cola. Yeah. Oh yes, Joey. Yeah, Joey actually. Um, whose show is he with right now? He was doing. He's doing he started going out and doing his own comedy club thing again. Right, but he was at a show because I. Oh, yeah, I think was there, he doing Doctor Oz or something like that. Uh, was it Doctor oh. Oz? I don't know. I was at a show that he was at, and I said, "Oh, hi, Joey." It's actually no. Yeah, it's not Doctor Oz. I don't think. Was it Rachel Ray or yeah, Wendy? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, one of the maybe it's Rachel Ray that he was doing. Anyhow, back to you about different things. What is your what's your next project? Do you think that you'll be able to even get to? Well, I've been to, I've been so lucky because I've been working on projects all summer. I, I music directed and produced the Playbill Pride Spectacular at the end of June, oh. which had a whole host of Broadway stars. It was really great. Harvey Firestein was in it, yeah. and, and so many of my great friends. And now I'm producing a concert of a musical I've written called Sticks and Stones, and we are doing it uh, as a benefit for Lady Gaga's Born This Way Foundation, which is a great organization. Um, and so we have assembled a Broadway cast, Audra McDonald, George Salazar, Joshua Coley, and we just, um, we haven't announced yet, but we have some other Broadway stars up our sleeve. So that, that announcement will go out really soon. And we have the coolest thing, Marie, of all is that we opened up auditions to kids all across. First, we thought the country, it wound up being the globe, kids whose high school shows were canceled, their summer camps were canceled. There's so many talented kids all, all over the place. Uh, so we, we opened up auditions and kids submitted. We had almost 1,500 submissions from all over the world. And we, we can only cast 90, but that's a lot. 90 is a lot. That is. Our and I shared that. I shared that because Playbill, oh, yeah, Actors Fund or Playbill, who are you doing it for? 
for Born This Way, Lady Gaga's organization. Yeah, so I ended up sharing it with, and um, oh, people started to tell me that um, their child had. had yeah, the, the, the response was astounding. And so we're really looking forward to that. That will air in October, around October 14th, 15th, something like that. We, we're just about to set the date. And once we set the date and the, the final talent, we're going to send out a big release and hopefully uh, we'll get the word out. And it's going to be a really beautiful concert. Yeah, you'll make sure you let us know. I and will. you'll have to remind me, I'll put it up there. And you know, just yeah. this morning, we're t this is September 1st. Just this morning, Playbill asked me to do another concert that's probably going to air, I think, around December 1st for World AIDS Day, which is... Oh, that's awesome. That so, is awesome. Yeah, so we, we are... Uh, I'm continuing my very, I love my relationship with Playbill. And um, and so, yeah, another one just came on the horizon this morning. You what? know what? You're very blessed, but you're a Thank kind you. person. And that's one of the things that I have realized with people that are in, in the entertainment industry, especially in today's world. If you weren't kind out there, you may be missing opportunities now because people don't want to deal with you. Right. I think that's absolutely true. Yeah. And, and because of myself meeting you and because of going on the Rosie cruise when she and Kelly were still together and I went on the cruises and that, I met like Seth and all these other people. And Seth was a writer at the time Yeah, for the Rosie O'Donnell show. And Jeanette Barber was a producer there. Yeah, and I'm writer. I'm friends with and a writer and I'm friends with them and Seth is one that turned me on to StreamYard here and he worked with me uh, to get it right. And that's just because, let me, I don't know if you know his mom, but his mom is one of the most brilliant women I've ever met in my life. She's a hoot to be with. She is. And, yeah. and his husband, James, I know him. I know his mother. I know um, his, their daughter and that. And I've been fortunate because of going on the Rosie cruises or the Our Family cruises to meet a lot of people in the entertainment industry and become friends with people because people are people, no matter who you are. Correct. Yeah. You're That's a person. Correct. And you have feelings and you have bills to make and everything like that. Before we end, because we still have uh, probably about eight minutes left. I know it goes fast. So. I I want to express to you how much you've done for people in this world. Thank because you. sometimes people don't say thank you to you. And you have done things for other people in this world. And you do benefit concerts, too. And, yeah. it's, it's and is there, yeah, with your passion, what is the biggest thing that you're most passionate about my dog clarence, <laughs> clarence, is, dog, clarence. clarence no, you have a dog too yeah, we rescued him a year ago and he's uh, he was seven then he just had his eighth birthday a couple weeks ago yeah. and he's our he's our joy our love and uh he's the first thing that popped into mind when he said what are you most passionate about but i think also you know uh, uh, I, I love nurturing young talent. I love, you know, sp this is what's great about doing this Sticks and Stones concert is we're able to spot talent from Boise, Idaho and from, and actually we, we have people who are going to be involved from New Zealand and Japan and Germany and Ireland and like, it's, it's incredible. Uh, so that, that fuels my mm -hmm. fire and that gets me excited to work with young talent. Over the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing some Zoom rehearsals with people from all over, um, putting them together into these group numbers. And I think that's really exciting. It's really that's exciting. That's your passion too. Sticks and Stones, tell us about what's the premise. So Sticks and Stones is based on the David and Goliath story from the Bible. Um, we felt that my collaborator, Scott Luggs, and, and I felt that the David and Goliath story had never really been told. And we have framed it in a um, in a schoolyard. So it's, it begins in the schoolyard and it ends in the schoolyard. But there's there's so much bullying going on in the world now um, that we're really 
sort of highlighting this anti-bullying um, platform yeah. and movement because I think that there's there's a lot of you know a lot of hate and a lot of uh, putting people down and and I think that I'm all about the opposite of that so I'm trying to you know put that out into the world so anyway that's that's kind of what Sticks and Stones is about the story of David and his is believing in himself that he can actually kill the giant. So it's really exciting. Wonderful. When when you're talking about this and coming up with these ideas, I know with Bonnie and Clyde too, when you did it at the Oslo and you, the, uh, was it the composer? I know that you were the musical director, flew in from- did the orchestrations, yeah. yeah. And I know Jeff Calhoun was there and other people. It, yeah. And when you did it at the Oslo, those are considered your workshops. Are those considered the workshop or what is that? Workshop are really pre-Broadway productions. And yeah, that's we what First we did it in uh, La Jolla, California. They have a beautiful theater there, the La Jolla Playhouse. And then we did it subsequently at the Oslo in Sarasota. We tinkered with it and got it sort of better and better, and then brought it from there to, to Broadway, where Broadway. it had a nice little run of seven or nine months or something. And then right. that's a show that's actually done a lot. That, um, which is- Around the country? Around, yeah, schools and groups and, yeah. Oh, I did not realize that. Is Taboo out there still? Taboo is not, because the creators of Taboo are trying to circle their wagons and redo taboo in a way and get it sort of put it out in a in a fresh way i think they feel that it can be better taboo i think you know had we gone out of town with taboo or developed it a little bit more um it, it didn't really have the time to bake in in my view um on broadway it was it was very quick and i think <clears throat> we thought it was more ready than it was and you never know until you get in the theater and you realize oh my gosh this part doesn't make any sense. And so you have to spend a lot of time figuring that out and making it better. Um, and so I think the, the uh, I have asked, I've been asked, can you help me get the rights to Taboo? And they just don't want to give the rights out because they want to do it again in a new way somewhere. And then that's the version that they want to send out in the world. Does that make sense? Yeah. And how about Brooklyn? Brooklyn is out there. Brooklyn um, can be licensed and is done strangely enough in Korea and all around Southeast Asia, Brooklyn's been done a lot. You can go on YouTube and see lots of productions, um, sort of bootleg clips from, or news clips from, from productions there. Brooklyn also had a US tour um, summer of 2006, I think. We, we did a whole summer on the road with Diana DeGarmo, who was great in Melbourne. Right. And um, who else was in that? It was so much fun. So looking to the future, and in case you ever want to be on a show again, I'm always open here. Okay. We, uh, we're, we're booked out till uh, September, October now. Okay. Uh, but just in case you ever want to do something, we are available. You know that it's easy. You know it's me. It's fine. Love it. You know, and we know each other well. And Dee Dee, do you have any last words of wisdom for John? <laughs> I just wanted to tell John, thank you. Um, wow. Being a person of influence, John, and do, doing things to spread love and kindness in this world is so important. And little so. people like me can't really make a difference, but somebody like you can. And I really we can appreciate all do it. We can all do it together. Well, <laughs> I'll support you. Dee <laughs> okay. uh, Dee, I'll just, um, I edit this show. So it'll be on the radio tomorrow with editing done to it. I take oh. it really, really. This is a Facebook live version and I pull out stuff, any stupid stuff that I say. Like <laughs> I do. I do take that off. No. And we can just, we'll just kind of stop right here, but we can continue on if we want to still stay on and I just cut it where I need to. Well, I just want to thank you for, for having me this afternoon. It was great to see you. And uh, thanks for, for being there and doing what you're doing. It's great. Well, and I have to thank you, Ambrosie, because you encouraged me to do 
children's theater and I didn't have the background, but I developed a kids on stage program here in Charlotte County That's because great. there was no children's program here. And so it is live and well, still going today. They did it. They did do it this summer and they wore face masks. They actually did it in person and uh, wore the shields and all. Wow. And, and yeah, it's interesting. But I would like to also personally thank you for encouraging me to even go into a field that I really didn't know well. Right you on. Know? Yeah. You can do whatever you want in this life. You can do whatever you want. You can be whoever you want to be. But most of all, be kind, because we do have choices in life to be kind or not to be kind. Absolutely. And civility is number one priority to be kind. Right. You on. only get one life. Right, John? As far as and we know. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, we'll have that as another. <laughs> right. To be continued. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you again Yay. next time on Kaleidoscope of the Arts. I'm Marie Labrasse. And I'm Didi Gozian. Thank you.